Okay, so part two. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the wheels. And I've already aligned the axes of the revolve tool. I'll show you how to do that. When I use the revolve tool, by default, uh, it's, it's lining up with the Z axes of the world. If I delete that object, I can move this revolve tool and I do so by hitting the left trigger. And if I let go, I can now create a pipe. It's going to follow this axis here. The trouble here is that I don't have the ability to line this wheel perfectly up with the, with the X axis anymore. So I might create a wheel and did my best there to, to line it up, but then when I go and I move it right down along X with my axes move, it's, it's actually angled. Got some camber there that I didn't want. There's a couple of ways to, to get this lined up properly. One, one of the ways is uh, you go to your settings and you turn on grid. So now if I, if I move around firmly pressing the trigger, it's going to snap to the grid but I'm not able to put it exactly in the center of the wheel. And when I create elements in grid mode, those elements snap to the grid as well. I can turn off grid mode and then create elements freely with this new axis in place. So it has advantages and disadvantages. I just created something that has really nice flatness to the edge of the wheel, or the tire, but I didn't uh, put it in the exact right spot. So another way is with grid mode off, I'm going to go zoom in here to find where the center is, and then I'm going to lightly press the trigger rather than pull, fully pressing it in. And now if I let go, I've got my correct axes here. But I'm not in grid mode, so when I go to create, it might go in. So I'm going to keep it really close to where that other line is and complete that action. Now if I go into edit mode and grab this, I can move it along the axes myself. So that's another way to do it that also works really well. I'm going to take this whole object and I'm going to move it along the axes into position. And we already have that tire line that we put in place here um, to tell us kind of how wide it would be. So I'm going to go into edit mode in this tire and with this one selected, I'm going to left click to add an additional point and one more. And that just holds the edge of this transition in the surface. And then adding one to three points, and it doesn't need to go very far because the tire wouldn't go very far either. It would just go around and inside. So the next thing we need to do is start to create the rim. And so we'll create that outer rim. So I'm going to click once and then pull out, click again, come in. Click one, two, three times. Uh, I want to make sure that that all the way down move is accurate. So I'm going to left click to complete and then go into edit mode. And I'm going to move it along the axis. Now on the other side, people aren't going to see this part. So be as detailed as you want to be. I'm usually going around and completing the actual tire. The front wheels, it's going to turn. And, um, and so you might see that. Let's at least complete it to about here so there's something reasonable to see if if you did go that far so with the rim in place for the wheel we want to make a wheel cap so i'm going to zoom in here and i'm going to right click right click and then left click to complete and i can go to edit mode and bring this all the way to the center so this is where it's important to look at reference i have this orthographic view but understanding the 3d shape of this is super important so this angles in and and it kind of it has a kink right about here and so that's something to keep in mind so i'll leave that as a marker and just kind of pull it into place and we can push this back you need to have enough room for those brakes but you want that offset to come in to give it that aggressive look i'm gonna click bring it out nice big fat carbon ceramic brakes if you want to go in and finish that on the other side you can but i'm not going to we need to have one, two, three, four, five of these different two-pronged spokes. Doing this with polar symmetry stroke tool is the way to go. I'm going to turn polar symmetry to five. And I'm going to make a point inside of this wheel. And I'm going to come up to that reference that I made. And then I'm going to come down to the wheel cap. Um, now these go across. 
one more click and back this way. I'm going to complete that and delete the extra point that I made. So let's look at how this all lines up. So we've got kind of a bend in towards this piece here and a bend in towards it here. And it's kind of angular. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to increase the weight just to make it extreme to show you what I mean. I'm going to increase the weight with the right analog stick to give it a tighter bend. Now we can make these smaller and these a bit bigger. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go into angle mode. Just want We want to make this per perpendicular to the, to the wheel. And then with this, I can turn this out that way and this out that way. And we've cleaned that up. So it's a nice transition there. Now to give that extra volume that this has, um, I'm going to duplicate this and, and just push it back. And then I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to increase the size of the whole thing. So we've just given ourselves that extra volume. Now with the revolve tool again, we can actually just edit this wheel cap and then duplicate it down and then bring it inside and have it come out around where those studs would be and then complete that action. Okay, so to make these brake calipers, I've got surface on, I'm making it flat, um, I'm going point mode and I'm just gonna do a simple uh, crescent shape along the edge um, leave edit mode and, and go back to the, the surface tool and just just draw um, a new surface that, that does what you're going for to give it that thickness. And so I'll go over subdivision surfaces later, but this is the, the first example I'll give of how you can, you can make it happen without subdivision surfaces, and you could still make something that looks really cool. But I just make sure it overlaps and even sticks out a little bit uh, when I'm working this way, because then the light never gets through it. And to finish this, I'm just going to do another piece here. It, it's kind of like origami. Um, I'm going to grab these and group them by hitting the purple button on the left side. And then I'm going to grab this as well and group that. So it's just adding to the group. Um, if, you, if you grab additional objects with a group selected and then hit group again, you'll either see this break, which is breaking it away from a group, so now they're separate, or if I group it, and then I've got another piece here that I need to add and I grab, see it's not going to break, it's going to add. So with that grouped, I can just grab it and move it into this side. Speaking of grouping, let's group this whole wheel now. Make sure we got everything and then hit purple, it'll hop back to where it was. And you can use axes move to duplicate this and move it to the front. So now we've got two wheels. And then I'm just going to move this over here. And that's looking pretty good. One thing I think that could be cool is if um, we duplicated these, and we can make them circles on the rotor. And that'll just add some character. And we can also add some squared off kind of slots. And the lighting will catch that if you end up in another program like Blender and do a nice render of this. All right, you've got, you've got yourself a decent wheel. With these wheels in place, we can start to build a fender around that wheel. And this is where it's really important to be looking at your reference. Uh, that one's turned, and so even though there's a different um, wheel pattern on this one over here, I'm still going to work with this one because it's got that nice straight wheel, so I can base it off of that. So we're going to turn on the surface tool, and we're going to put it in point mode. And each time I tap, uh, while holding the right trigger, I tap the left trigger, it's going to create this surface. It is really powerful for surfacing, for creating the actual geometry of an object. Um, but there's an easier way to do it. I can turn on bridge curves and go to full curve here. I can just hold the right trigger and then the left trigger once I've highlighted the other line and click and I get a surface that goes all the way across between those two lines perfectly. Uh, but my lines are on their own layer, um, so I can turn the lines off and on, and my surface is off and on. And that way you can keep your lines, um, and you know, if I edit this surface, 
uh, it's not attached to the line. Um, and so if you want to edit both, you have to make sure both layers are active and edit them together. One thing I want to point out is that there's a separate undo queue for whether you're editing an object or whether you're in object mode. So if I move this one, two, three, and then undo one, two, three, um, now I'll, I'll redo that and I'll edit it one, two, three. Um, I have, I can still move that object one, two, three here with undo queue on the object. And then if I go into edit mode, I have a separate undo history for the edits made inside that object. So you can get a bit confused with whether you're editing object mode and undoing there, or uh, you know, you're inside of the object, but having both undo cues is actually really powerful and helpful. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this and we're gonna use uh, subdivision surfaces to extrude it out. Now I'm gonna convert this into sub D mode and doing so has moved it away from my lines a little bit because the, uh, the interpolation is a bit different than the um, NURBS mode. And that's okay uh, because we're actually in this model, we're really trying to go with solid surfaces and I'm going to try to get it to a point where we can remove those lines and it'll still look good. Um, so I'm going to turn my lines on transparent. Um, so they're just there as a reference for me. Um, so if you grab an edge, highlight over an edge, you'll see that it's it, it goes dark. Um, or a face, um, I can, one at a time on these edges, I can grab it, click, um, and pull it out. And now if I take a point and I put it over another point, it's going to merge those. And I, so I've created a new um, edge loop here that's extruding off of, the, off of the mesh. And you can see how quickly uh, I can... I can retopologize this. Um, at first, it kind of feels, compared to a 3D program, it kind of feels like you're doing a lot of putting things in place by hand and snapping them. But once you realize how quick it is to do that in VR, um, you'll find that it's not so bad. Uh, I think that I'd like the ability to select multiple points and do it all at once. The closest thing to that is you can turn on uh, select a, uh, the edge mode. Um, auto select loops. So now if I click this and uh, extrude that, I get all these points at once. Um, but I, I don't find myself doing that too often because it's so easy to extrude um, individual points. And uh, this one ends up being a little less accurate for me um, because when I do it by hand, I'm more careful. Um, so I'm gonna add some edge loops here just to make sure we've got a nice round uh, ring around that fender and I'm going to bring these in and I'm looking at my reference lines to make the, make sure they're in the right spot and I'm doing this because I want to crease the line for that outside edge of the fender there and when I crease it I need to make sure that there's enough points um, already there for it to maintain the proper roundness and that's looking good. So I'm going to go into the crease tool um, and then I'm going to crease these edges along that line. Now I'm realizing that I don't need this edge loop in here, so I'm in with edge loop, edge loop mode selected, I'm going to delete it. And I just deleted the entire edge loop and just dissolved it. Um, now if I pull this one in closer here, you can see that seam is being created. And I'm looking at that line that was established here and thinking about how that's going to be a sharp line coming down and across. And so I'll probably crease that and, and have it come all the way down um, to make this triangular mark here. I'm going to put the reference in a better spot so it's easy for me to look up and see exactly what I'm trying to do. So I'm just following these lines here and moving the geometry into place relative to those lines. But at this point, I want to bring this down. Um, I'm not curving this across because it comes down and, and then there's a hard line here that goes across. And so um, I'm going to go into my line layer and make that active and unlock it. And then I'm going to go into my line tool and just make a mark of what I'm trying to do. So what I'm trying to do is, um, is really just 
draw this coming down um, and then coming across like this. And so there's there's a divot that goes this way. So that means this is sort of pushing out here. And, and then this kind of pushes down. I'm going to go back to surfaces and I'm going to extrude uh, with this whole edge loop uh, down and then I'm going to add an edge loop and pull it out and uh, I'm going to turn that off so I can just do one at a time and then bring this down here and each time I overlap with one of these it's going to snap give me that connected mesh um, but one thing that we notice is that there's a crease on this section and so I'm going to add that crease in um, I'm doing that with the uh, edit mode on the object. And then I'm going to uh, hidden menu, crease tool, and I'm just going to crease that edge. Somewhere around here, it really, it really goes up sharply. So I'm grabbing this and bringing that up. And then I'll add an additional edge loop here to maintain that volume. Now this part here needs to be sharp as well, so I'm going to add one more edge loop. And we're going to take this hood line and bring it up to the front of the light. This edge loop is going to go up to here, and then I'm bringing these in to connect and make their way down the topology. And we're going to stop at the door line. Bring that all the way up. So right here I'm seeing a really stretched quad. Um, so I think I want to bring this edge loop out and this edge loop out. So I'm going to delete this and then bring this out and connect it and then bring this up and connect it. So we've placed our five point here a little further back and it gives us more resolution to come through. Um, the way that it looks in the, in the reference, um, this is going to come all the way up and round nicely over the top to here. So I need to bring all of these over. So use, you should use critical thinking while you're creating your geometry from the lines and really look at what's the difference. What choices did you make that might not be quite right based on what you're looking at? And um, if you do that, then you'll find that the geometry pass actually becomes even more solid than the lines pass, which is great. Uh, I'm going to add another edge loop here and then push these down. Then once I extrude out past that, it's going to give me the, the hood line. I'm going to go to loop mode and I'm going to grab it here. There's one extra loop uh, point that I don't want that I can just delete that and I'm going to bring it down, uh, duplicate it again, and then I'm just going to bring it all the way across and it snaps. So it makes it really easy see where that hood should go and then I release. So this part needs to come up but otherwise that's pretty close to what we were going for. So now I'll just go in through each individual point. I'm going to turn off auto select loops and just kind of move it down to where it needs to be based on the reference. And I said that I had an extra point here which is this so I'll just delete that and it deleted all the way down. Looking at where this door line goes, we're going to take this and we're going to extrude that up this way. Um, and so this is just an indication that I need to do that later. Okay, let's turn our lines off and we're going to go um, look at the mesh and then add creasing where we need to. And then we can crease these lines. So I'm going to go back into that hidden menu, crease, and then click on these on the top of the hood line edges there. Now to get this to be correct with the reference we need to add an edge loop here for the hood line um, because it doesn't go all the way to the end. It goes right about here. I can drop it down with the loop select on and give it a hood line. And we can just bring these super close together create that tight seam. If we need to add additional edge loops to maintain the seam and make it feel 
like the metal goes all the way up to the edge. Just do that by clicking here once. And twice. We may want to crease it as well. And so I'm going to go into that crease mo mode, that hidden menu, and crease each of the edges. And we'll add one more edge loop here to signify the end of the light. There's a crease here that we want to take all the way to the end. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to use the knife tool uh, or the cut tool. I can actually create new edge loops uh, or I can come off of triangles with control over where it goes. And so that way you can kind of change your topology. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to continue this line out. And I want this to be quads ideally, so I'm just going to draw this connecting edge in here. And then you can just delete these to get rid of them. So then this section, I'm just going to push these down and we can crease some of these edges here. So this is the point where uh, we're going to create a seam coming across. So I'm going to move this up a little bit and turn it. So I'm able to get that seam to go all the way to where it needs to go. And then I can come into the cut tool here and I can come across all the way to the edge of the light where we see it in the reference. And now I can do that again here. And I'm going to need to move these apart because I just messed my fender line up. Um, but first I'm going to add an edge loop across this. And then I'm going to go into, it's just like the hood line. I'm going to go into grab this entire line and move it down and then move these closer together. And then I'm going to go into the crease tool and I'm going to crease all the way down on the tops of these. But adding that extra edge loop messes up the curve from the side. And so with that in mind, um, add another, another corrective edge loop and fix the fender. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. When you create new edge loops, you lose some of your seams. So just make sure to add those creases back in. Um, let's go ahead and extrude this all the way across. If you want to get rid of points, you got to do that in, in edge loop select mode. Because if I delete a point, it's going to delete the whole area. But if I want to get rid of some of these to simplify it, uh, just delete that when, you're, when you have edge select turned on. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to make one additional edge loop and bring that down. I'm going to click, 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 and then connect, connect. And um, I'll just add some supporting edge loops to complete that shape. I'm just bringing this closer together, and then I'm going to crease it to give you that line to indicate where that hood ends. This is looking pretty good. And um, the only thing left to do is uh, if we'd like to have these panels be separate, because they are actually separate um, and you want to see those seams or maybe even uh, you know UV wrap them separately you can just duplicate these so when I duplicate this whole thing uh, somebody tell me if there's another way to do this but I zoom way in and I make my selector big enough to grab it in the move axes tool and then I try to keep it as close to zero as possible and if I nail zero, it's great. Oh, I didn't quite do that. Um, and then I move it up a little bit. And that's the best way that I know how to duplicate an object and keep it in the same spot. Because if I duplicate something and I'm big, I've just moved it away from symmetry and away from where it was. Um, and so that's been my strategy. So then if I go into edit mode on this, I can delete all of the points um, that 
that aren't part of the single component that I'm wanting to focus on um, and have unwrapped separately. So in this case, it would be that uh, top of the fender there. And um, just going to delete all of these points as well. Now with all of those extra points deleted, I, I have a version of the fender that's only the part that I need. And I can just do the opposite to the other parts of it. And I don't need to duplicate this one the same way because I'm just removing the place where that other one already is. Now I just got to zoom way in again and then move it on the vertical axis until it matches up with the original. So now we've got that same uh, look and the same spacing of everything, but I got a separate fender there. I'm just going to separate out the hood and that'll be it for now. There you have it. We've got a uh, wheel, tire, uh, upper fender, bumper into fender, and a hood. And they're all separate. So it's looking pretty nice. There's some little bit of weird transitions in some places, but um, I mean, I wouldn't worry about that too much. But a lot of the, this, especially like the surface transitions and the um, just overall flow and feel of this could totally be on par with um, what I'd expect from a 3D engine um, that is more traditional, like you know, like Blender, Moto, Maya, Cinema 4D. Um, so that's really impressive to me, um, and I hope it's confidence-inspiring that you can uh, create stuff that's this accurate. Um, in Gravity Sketch. So thanks for checking this out. In the next episode, I'm going to continue finishing this. Uh, I'm going to fill the rest of this out, and we'll have a completed car.